Microsoft has introduced more than 100 enhancements in Dynamics GP 2013. These are some of my favorites. Let's take a look at them. Dynamics GP 2013 introduces some nice functionality around the home page and the area page. I really like it. Let's take a look at it. So this is the GP 2013 homepage. Looks like ones you've seen before. But what I like about it is I can change the elements, the way to display here, just by dragging and dropping these elements on the screen. So if I want to move this element down, I just drag it down and it's done. But what I really like is it extends this functionality into the area pages. So let's take a look at the purchasing area page here. I've got all these windows like I've seen before, but what I can do here is I can also change it on the area pages here without any coding. I can also expand these. So here I want to see the entire element. I can expand that. And I've got it all right here. I can easily shrink it back. This is a small little feature, but I really like it. GP 2013 includes some new tolerance handling functionality around the purchase order receipts function. It allows you to specify a minimum above which you can receive a quantity and that PO line will be completed. It also has a maximum below which you can receive up to that and it will handle that. If you receive over that amount, you'll get a warning message. So let's take a look at it. There's two parts of it. First we need to go to the item the item that we want to set the tolerances for. Let's pick this one here. And then we need to go out to the purchasing options maintenance right here. You see down here in the lower right hand side they've added some additional functionality. Here I can specify the shortage and the overage. The shortage is the minimum amount that I need to receive in order to close that line in the PO. The overage is the maximum amount I can receive on that particular line. So I set this up for each product and now let's see it in action when we receive the PO. So let's go to the purchasing area page and look up this purchase order. I entered this previously. I've got this item on listed three times. Now let's go ahead and receive that. So I'm going to receive this PO. And on the first line, I'm going to receive it short. So here I'm going to receive it short, but within the tolerance. So the tolerance is 5%. I need to receive 95% or more. So I'm going to hit, hit 98 on this. I'm going to receive 98 on that. It allows me to do that. And then on this one here, I'm going to pull in 110. This exceeds my tolerance. And you can see I get this message here. So I'm going to enter 104. It will allow me to enter that amount. So let's receive these amounts. And then take a look at the PO. So here's the PO that we just received against. You notice this first line, we only received 98 of the 100 that we ordered. So it automatically canceled too because it was within the tolerance level. So we can highlight that item and we can go to the information button here and you can see exactly what happened. I just received 98 and it canceled too. Now the next line item I received over, take a look at that. I received 104, but remember when I first initially tried to receive 110, I got that error message. I really like this functionality in GP 2013. It's going to help you tighten up your receiving process. GP 2013 comes with new functionality that allows you to automatically create prepayments for specific purchase orders. This is functionality we've been waiting for for a while, so I think you're going to really like it. Let's take a look at it. Here's GP 2013. Let's go over to the purchasing area page and open up a new purchase order. So here's a new screen. Let me just enter a quick purchase order and we'll take a look at this new functionality. I'm just going to enter something simple. And there we have our completed PO. Now it's ready to send out to the vendor, but the vendor has requested a $3,000 down payment on this. So let's go ahead and make that prepayment and it's easy to do. I'm going to enter $3,000 in here. And when I do that, this automatically creates a record that allow me to create a payment from the normal accounts payable process within GP. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to save this PO 
and we'll come back to it later. Let's now go ahead and create a check for that payment. This is a screen with which I like to use to create checks. So let's create a new batch here. Let's use this one PO deposit. And when I create a new batch, I want to make sure that I select this option here, purchasing prepayment batch. I'm going to look up a checkbook ID and save that batch. When I tab off that, it's going to show me all the vendors for whom I have prepayments scheduled. Let's select this one here. And you can see this is the prepayment that we just entered. So I'm going to go ahead and print a check. And this is just the normal check printing process within Dynamics GP. Let's use this option here. So I'm going to go ahead and print that. And there's a check format right there. Let's check, take a quick look at it. Here's my prepayment for $3,000. has automatically been associated with that PO that we entered previously. Let's go ahead and post that. Now let's go ahead and look at that purchase order. If I go back to the purchase order entry screen, look at the last PO we entered, you can see that prepayment has been made. We go here and get details on that prepayment. So this prepayment was automatically created from the PO screen. I went into accounts payable, wrote the check, and now that prepayment is associated with purchase order. And I can go ahead and print out this purchase order and send it to my vendor. This is new functionality within Dynamics GP that I think you're really going to like. This allows you to make prepayments to purchase orders, associate that prepayment with a specific order, and it really speeds up the process. I think you're going to like it. Please try it out. GP 2013 adds some new functionality that makes it easy to add related items into a sales order. There's two parts of it. One is the setup and one is actually in the order. Let's take a look at it. Let's go to the inventory area page, open up an item. Let me take a look at this main item here. So this is the main item that I regularly sell on my sales order. But what I can do is I can add suggested items that will pop up during sales order entry. So what I want to do is go to this item here and then hit suggested items. And I've added these two items. These are related items that I may also want to sell in conjunction with the primary item. So let's take a look at how that works. So let's go to the sales area page and add a new order. Open up the sales transaction entry screen and add a new order for this customer here. Put in a batch. And I'm going to add items to the order. Let's add this first item here. This is the main item that we just looked at. So I'm going to add one of these items. And when I tab off this line, it's going to open the, up this window that will suggest additional items I might want to add to the order. I can add one or more of these items. I can also change the quantity if I wanted to. So I'm going to add those to the order. And you can see that they're nicely added to the order right here. This is nice functionality that will help your order takers better serve your customers. You should take a look at it in GP 2013. There's new functionality in GP 2013 that allows me to select multiple serial numbers when I need to for inventory transaction, for sales order, for sales invoice. So let me show you how to do that. This is going to really speed up that process. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's enter a sales order to see how this works. I'm going to create a new order. Let's select the customer here. Put in a batch. And let's select a serialized number. Here's one here. I'm going to select 20. It's going to open up this window. This shows me all the available serial numbers for this particular item. And previous to GP 2013, I would have to select each one individually and insert it. But now I can select a range or I can select multiple serial numbers and move them over to the right window. For example, I can select this one here, this serial number, this serial number, this serial number, and I can move it over. Or I can select a range. Hit the shift key and move all those over. Select another range. move those over, and now I'm done. It's that simple. This is going to really speed up the data entry time. This is another example of how Dynamics GP 2013 is going to speed up your work. GP 2013 includes the ability to track serial numbers and lot numbers on dropship purchase orders. 
What this means is when you put the vendor's invoice for a dropship PO, you can enter the serial numbers or lot numbers at that time. This will improve the control you have over your inventory and in tracking those serial numbers and lot numbers. Let's take a look at it. To get started, let's enter a sales order for drop shipment to our customer. So I'll enter a quick order here. Look up the customer. Put that in a batch. Then I'm going to enter a serialized number for my inventory. Here it is here. Now I've got some on hand, and that's what's bringing this window up here, but I don't want to use those. I want to have these drop shipped. So I'm going to drop ship those items. And then I'm going to go ahead and purchase those. So I've got these items drop shipped, and I'm going to purchase that. Go through this dialog box here, and let's take look at the vendor from whom I'm going to purchase this. Uh, this will be this one right here. So I'm going to create a PO based on the demand in the sales order. So let me generate that PO here. So now that PO is generated, let's take a look at that PO. Let's go over to the purchasing area page here and take a look at that purchase order. Here's the purchase order that was created automatically from that sales order. And here you can see the link back to the sales order here. So let's go ahead and invoice this. Let's pretend that this has been already shipped to the customer. So I'm going to enter the vendor's invoice for this. It brings up the screen here, and I want to enter the serial lot number right now, so I'm going to check this box here and then hit Invoice. It's going to bring up this screen here, and here I can enter the serial numbers for this particular shipment. So I'll just enter that here right now. So I've entered all the serial numbers, hit OK, and now this vendor's invoice is ready to post. It's going to relieve the purchase order and also assign those serial numbers to the sales order. So let's take a look at that. Let's post this. So let's take a look at that sales order again. We're going to open up that sales document here. This is it here. And we can open up this line item and we can see that this is ready to go. It's already been fulfilled because we just entered the vendor's invoice. We can look at the serial numbers here. Here are the serial numbers. They're all assigned, and it's ready to go. So I can take this sales order. Now it's ready to invoice, and I'm just going to transfer that to an invoice. I'm going to take it out of the batch and post that. So what this will do is this will show those items and those serial numbers going out to that customer to verify. I can go into field service here and look at the equipment for those items. So let's take a look at that equipment. Do a look up here and let's find on the item number. Here you can see these are the serial numbers that we just added here. They're added during the PO invoice process that automatically went into the sales order and then we invoice that and then the system created these equipment items in the system. So that is a complete look at the new functionality in GP2013 where I can put my serial numbers and lot numbers in on those dropship purchase orders when I enter the vendor's invoice. This is going to improve the control within your business. Dynamics GP 2013 includes the ability to consolidate invoicing. Now this only works with the fulfillment order process, but let's take a look at how you do it. So I just entered these four orders right here. And these are four orders to the same client, and they have a number of different items on them. So let's take a look at one of them. Here's one of the orders, and you can see this is a fulfillment order type. I can drill back into that. And this is a standard workflow that I'm using. So I'm going to go through these six steps. I'm printing the picket and ticket, confirming the picking ticket, printing the packing slip, confirming that, and then it's in ship status or to be ship status. And what you have to do in order to use this consolidated invoice functionality, you have to hold there and then jump to a new screen. So let's do that. I'm using this workflow here. Let me just close this up here. Again, this is one of the orders I'm using. I've got four orders right here. So 
what I'd like to do is I'd like to have this functionality up here in the screen, but it's not there. What I need to do is then go to my sales area page here and take a look at this function, bulk confirmation. So what I want to do is I'm looking at items that are ready to ship or they have shipped and what I'm going to do is confirm the ship. So again, in order to use the consolidating invoice functionality, you have to come up to this point, to the point where the items have shipped and you have not yet confirmed the ship. So let me redisplay these here and you can see that I've got these four items that are at that step in the workflow. You can see the document status here as shipped. So what I want to do is I want to create the combined invoice. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to look up the invoice type and put those into a batch. So this is all I need to do and what it's going to do is combine the line items from these four invoices and put them onto one. So let's do that right now. And here's the standard report that shows these four items being consolidated into one invoice. And You can see that here. Here's the invoice that was created from the consolidation process. Now let's take a look at that invoice. Go to sales transaction entry, look up an invoice, And there it is. This is a result of consolidating four in four orders invoices into this one invoice. And this is a process again that you have to use the fulfillment order process in GP. And you have to make sure that you do the consolidation right before you confirm the ship. If you do that, it's easy to combine these items onto one invoice. And this is going to be helpful for a lot of people that have multiple orders that they want to combine onto one invoice to the customer.